on Friday afternoon after about 10 hours of deliberations. A D.C. jury ordered Rudy Giuliani, former New York City mayor and United States attorney for the Southern District of New York, to pay a whopping $148 million in damages to former election workers Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman after destroying their lives with allegations of election fraud. And now they're seemingly turning their sights on others, including possibly Donald Trump. Today's a good day. A jury stood witness to what Rudy Giuliani did to me and my daughter and held him accountable. And for that, I'm thankful. Today is not the end of the road. We still have work to do. Rudy Giuliani was not the only one who spread lies about us. And others must be held accountable, too. Joining me now is Vaughn DuBose, partner at DuBose Miller LLP and one of the attorneys for Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman. Vaughn, it's, a, it's great to have you here. I want to ask you first and foremost, how are Shea Moss and Lady Ruby doing today? Good morning, Katie. Thanks for having me. Uh, they're doing well. I think they are still kind of absorbing what the verdict means, uh, but they are they are happy. Vaughn, with this verdict, Rudy Giuliani faces, at least civilly, his own accountability in what he did. But we know that he did this as a part of a greater conspiracy with Donald Trump and others. Can we expect to see Ms. Freeman and Ms. Moss seek justice against Donald Trump next? You know, we're constantly um, reviewing this, this situation. It's ever-evolving. Their new statements even still being made every day about Ruby and Shea. So uh, all the cards are on the table. We're not ruling anything out right now, uh, and we are constantly looking at what we need to do next to put these folks in the place or as close uh, as to their, their, their former selves as we can. Yeah, and you know, Vaughn, something that hasn't been talked about uh, since this verdict has come out is the fact that Shay and Ruby actually are still witnesses, victims in the Fulton County election case. So their work isn't done yet. They still have to be a part of that process as well, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Uh, we've cooperated with any uh, process that's come across our desk thus far, and they intend to keep doing so, of course. Um, I think it's important to note that this is uh, important for them, per them personally, but it's also important for all those civil service workers out there who are just doing their jobs, going about doing the things that really make this country work and go the way it should. Uh, and they deal with this kind of nonsense. So this is really an important decision beyond a lot of folks focus on the money, but for the purpose of informing people who would do this to civil servants, this is a, a historic, historic verdict. Yeah, and Vaughn, I, I appreciate you emphasizing that it's not just the money. First of all, you have a collections effort that you're going to have to do to be able to get the money from somebody who's clearly, I think, from what we've seen in that discovery process with him trying not to turn over his finances, him being Giuliani, he's going to make it difficult for you guys to be able to do it. But I want to emphasize something that Lady Ruby said about how she misses her name. I mean, there's a reason why... America and others are able to say, you know, easily, Shea Moss, Ruby Freeman. And sadly, we True. wouldn't have known who they are, right? Other than the fact that they were defamed, that they were elevated on a level by Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, Rudy Giuliani and others in such a horrible way. I mean, is that ultimately the message that was heard and received by the members of that jury in D.C.? Yes, I think so. Um, you know, th this has been such an ordeal for them not to have their names, not to have their freedom to go about their business and do the things that they've always done. And I think they would trade all of this for uh, their prior lives to come back to the way they are. But, you know, the jury spoke. They spoke on behalf of voiceless people like Ruby and Shay. Um, and the hope is that the people who would say things like this about innocent people who are just doing their jobs will think twice, and they'll understand that their, their, their lies have a price tag. So, Vaughn, people may not know this, but you testified yourself at a bond revocation hearing for Harrison Floyd, who's one of the many co-defendants in Donald Trump's RICO case that's being prosecuted by DA Fonnie Willis in Fulton County. 
Mm -hmm. Here's another thing maybe some people don't know. Harrison Floyd showed up in the D.C. courthouse, Judge Beryl Howell's courtroom, allegedly to show his support for Rudy Giuliani. But let's be clear. He was indicted in Fulton County for intimidating Ruby Freeman and Shay Moss. Do you think that Harrison Floyd showing up in court was an attempt to intimidate Miss Freeman and Miss Moss? Well, I can't say what it was uh, from his perspective. Uh, it, it certainly was no mistake that he showed up in that courthouse. Uh, and of course, once we understood that he was there, we took all appropriate measures to ensure Ms. Uh, Freeman and Ms. Moss's uh, safety. And that just underscores the, the ridiculousness of this situation where we would have to uh, scramble the way we did when one person shows up, uh, not knowing exactly what the intentions are, what he's there to do, uh, we had to take appropriate measures. And uh, so I can't really speak to what he was intending with his appearance. I didn't actually see him. I was face facing the jury and facing the judge and, and handling things with the trial. But um, it's unfortunate that that happened. And Vaughn, that really does underscore, right, the point of why Ruby and Shay brought this litigation um, maybe among other litigation that they're going to do, this idea that they otherwise would have been able to live their lives privately and in peace. But now, being a part of a judicial process, they have to worry about people like Harrison Floyd showing up and not knowing what his intentions are. And they don't really know some of these faceless others that are going to show up, as they did before, to threaten them. That's right. Uh, I think Ruby has put it best. I mean, she just doesn't know who she can give her name to when she meets uh, uh, someone for the first time. You don't know who's who. You don't understand or know who may be watching, who may be following. And to live your life like that is terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. And no amount of money can bring back a sense of security that's been lost in this case uh, by virtue of the things that have been done to them. So uh, that is a very, very difficult, difficult thing that they're going to face quite likely for the rest of their lives.